Jubi Rose, we have a veteran journalist who has had one-on-one -on -one experience and interviews, different interviews for that matter, with Professor Humphrey, and he is no other person than Mr. Vin Obiora. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning and welcome. Wonderful to have you here, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> so, so how would you describe Brick Rose? You know, having interviewed him, having met with him, how would you in, in? A patriotic Nigerian. Someone loves Nigeria so much. A selfless, a selfless public servant. Um, someone who is very Nigeria will give his life, if his life to make sure that Nigeria succeeded. That's how I would like to describe it. What was your experience with him having to interview him? I understand that you've interviewed him. In fact, in one of um, the Google search, if you search your interviews, at one of the yesterday. So what was your experience like when you were interviewing him? Well, first of all, about 2013 or 2014, I just told myself that Nobody knew about Humphrey Musso. Remembered him. People talk about June, I mean, June 12th, and all that happened around June 12th. And who made June 12th possible? Nobody knew anything about him. So I of him. And at that time, I now discovered that Humphrey was wrote, and what he did was that at the around this time of every year, October, November, Humphrey Musu returns there. I I know that it, when we talked about it, he didn't hold uh, abroad. So what he would do is October, November, and he would stay in Nigeria till about April, comes uh, to the U.S. So, I ran into a friend of mine who knew him personally. I said, oh, I know him. He will be back sometime in October, and I will see what I can do. So, funny enough, that, that is, is Emma Oha, who is mm. one of our colleagues <laughs> in the office here. So, when he returned, Emma informed me, and we went to see him. And when I came to interview uh, Humphrey, he was surprised, not pleasantly, because he he doesn't understand why not asking questions about what happened during June 12. At that time, he had not written his book. I can actually say that he my interviewed. first interview with him was where he started thinking about, look, I need to write a book. I need to put these things down. I've been, put, I've been you know, so we had that interview in Enugu. Um, I saw a man, simple man, no team, very humble, you know. You know, still an excited human being. When you talk with him, when he, you see how he gest uh, gesticulates, uh, he's, you know, a very boisterous, I must say, you know, person. But a very calm educated, very organized person. He knew what he was times. And he told me why he did what he did. If you, Humphrey had been commissioner for local government yes. in uh, the So when they were appointing him, uh, the, the appointment he thought he would have was like either minister education or something that has to do with education. The man that was the com uh, the chairman of the Tro Commission at that time was his lecturer at University of Nsoka. So that was moved, and he was appointed. So he didn't quite he was appointed, but he said, "Well." This is what my country wants me to do. I need to do it well. And he got his job with dedication, 
without bias, with patriotism, with nationalism. And of course, he came out with novel ideas. Something I was just talking about somebody talking with somebody about two weeks ago. A top a government of it was, we had a top government official and a member of the House of Representatives. And I was asking them, so why is Nigeria spending so much money on elections? We are importing um, uh, what they call beavers, we're importing this, we're importing that, we're importing that. I was asking, I was, I was asking these guys, I said, why don't we go back to option A4, mm. which worked for us? It is not expensive. It was a novel idea that Humphrey Mosu and his team, and he's a team player, all the time he would talk to me about uh, what happened, he would talk about his team and his commissioners, how they would have meetings and come up. He never really took glory for himself alone. He and his team came together and they were looking at everything. They looked at the US, they looked at here. What will work in Nigeria? And that reminds me of an interview I had with the president of Ghana, John Kufo, when he was president of Ghana. And we we're talking about the challenges of democracy in Africa. What I came out with from that interview with John Kufo was that we Africans, we in developing countries, we don't want anything original. We wanted to copy what the people in the West are doing, whether it sits well with us or not. What was he telling me in that interview, John Kufo, I'm coming back to Humphrey, was that Africa and developing countries should come out with systems of government that will work for them, that is in tune with their culture, in tune with their tradition, in tune with their Christian, uh, with, with their religion, with their religion, with their history. You know, something that is special to them. Mm. Because at that time, I was uh, trying to do a paper on democracy, not a one fit all, where I was arguing that, you know, and I asked him a question about democracy. I said, look, democracy is democracy. You can't change it. You can't. You can't be. Can't be homegrown democracy. It can't be Nigerian democracy. Democracy is democracy, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So he was making that point. And that was what I think guided Humphrey Mosu and his team. What can we find that is peculiar to Nigeria, that is indigenous to Nigeria, that will work in Nigeria? So that was how they came with, the, with what he called option A4. A4. Okay. Well, before you continue, yeah. what do you think is the major reason why... Africa, even Nigeria, okay, let's use Nigeria as a key factor. Why do you think that Nigeria cannot sit down to do what the governor of Ghana said? Let's make our the, the own president, system. Yeah, the president, the president, former president. The former of president, yes. Why can't we sit down and make do you, do you want to attribute it to laziness? No, no, no. no. Listen, uh, Joshua, if we start that conversation, it would take an entire program. So let's come back to Humphrey. Okay. okay. Let's come back to Humphrey. Maybe okay, one yeah, day, hopefully, yeah. I'll have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll come back to But let me say, because you young people, or younger people, yes. because you're not very young anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you younger people should know what we mean by option A4. Option A4 made it possible. And funny enough, in my local government, in my village, if we're having an election today, like we're electing our traditional ruler, that is what we use. Option A4 makes it possible that everybody comes, the, 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 the election is between Belinda and Joshua, so all the people that are supporting Joshua will line up behind Joshua. All the people that are supporting uh, Belinda will line up behind Belinda. In this one, there's no Joro. You can't take bribe. If you take bribe, it's in the open now. Yes. If you took bribe from me to vote for me, I want to vote for Belinda. It's not possible. And that worked. Then they counted it. Everybody will be watching the one, two, two. three, <laughs> four, five, six. And that was the most successful election in Nigeria. Yeah. The election that brought MKO Abiola, which the, the, uh, the soldiers annulled, it was the, it's still the freest and, and fairest yes, yes. election. So the question I was asking my friends about two weeks ago, why is Nigeria not going back to something that worked? Mm. 
Why are we spending billions on beavers, on uh, instant uh, uh, upload, blah, 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 blah. Why don't we go back to our option A4, which Humphrey Musso and his colleagues mm -hmm. tried. It worked. It's still working. Uh, the last traditional rule, last election we had in my village was option A4. And that happens in almost every community. So why is Nigeria wasting so much money doing what is not working when Humphrey Musso and his colleagues in way back 2000 and uh, 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 during the Ju June 12 uh, crisis and what have you, had come up with something that works for Nigeria. So this was a man who believed that for Nigeria to work, we must come up with indigenous and sp uh, peculiar solutions that fits, you know, fits well with who we are. Mm. You've talked about the option A4 voting system, of course, also the open ballot system. But I would want to know what aspect, what are the aspects of the June 12th uh, election represented an era of democracy? And why is this still symbolic right now? Because it worked. Because for the first time, Nigerians saw their votes counting across everywhere. Across everywhere. Tofa, who was running against Abiola, was from the north. But Abiola took votes from everywhere. It was while the election, Nigerians exercised their civic right. And their civic right counted, mm. made an impact. Okay, before, Even though because of the, the military truncated it. Because of time, I want to ask you just in one minute. Why is Humphrey Woods passing, uh, passing out now considered as the end to a democracy in Nigeria? No, no, no. I don't think anybody will say it's the end of democracy. But people are saying that, you know, this is the, the, the passing of someone who represented the truth and the fact that we can have true democracy in Nigeria. Okay. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. But before I let you go, we have a generation that does not know who Humphrey is. Respectfully, we have the Gen Zs, and if you ask mm. most of them, they don't know. How can we preserve such legends that have impacted the country, the people, and the system? How can we preserve? Okay, one is what I did, because I did a special... That interview lasted for almost five hours, but we brought it down to two hours. Mm. That interview, which they are playing now, is on YouTube. Yes. It's on signaturetv.org, our website. It's on our Facebook. It's so many places. The Gen Zs should uh, look for programs like this. That's number one. Number two. I have also reduced this interview and so many other interviews of great Nigerians in a book that was entitled In Their Own Words, which was uh, published and presented on the, on, the 30th, on the 31st of January this year. Mm. So people can also go and look for that book. That book has this... Where can we get the books? <laughs> uh, you can get them online. You can also get them if you reach out to, uh, if you send an email to Signature TV, newsroom at signaturetv.org. Okay. If you do that, we'll be able to tell you how you can get, get the, book. the book. It's not just about Humphrey Moose. It's about a lot of Nigerians who talk about what they have done. But before I leave, after the interviews, and I had the opportunity of being in the United States. And Humphrey knew that I was in the United States. He invited me over to Maryland because he lived around the Maryland, Washington area. And he took me out for lunch with his son. And for more than three hours, we were talking about uh, the elections that he conducted. We were talking about his thoughts about Nigeria. We were talking about his disappointment that, as at that time we had the interview, Humphrey has not been paid his gratuities. Mm. His pension from being chairman of yeah. the electoral body. Yes. Neither did they pay those that worked with him. Humphrey was 
in quotes, chased out of office or uh, uh, disgraced from office because they were unceremoniously sacked. If you watch this interview, you will hear where he talked about it. Humphrey was worried that his country, that he, sacrificed, he was ready to sacrifice life, that he sacrificed everything, came out with the election that was the, was the freest and fairest. And there was no gratitude. All they gave him was, uh, whether it's OFR or ON, one of the lowliest uh, national honors. For a man who did what he did, mm. you remember that sometime in June, as if the National Assembly knew that he was going to pass, they were asking the federal government to honor him appropriately. That did not happen. In that conversation that we had in uh, Maryland, I saw a man who was unhappy that his country, you know, did not um, honor him and never honored him, you know, commensurately with what he had contributed. I also remember that um, I was in New York and there was a Nigerian, okay, there was an international organization funded by a Nigerian and they were looking for somebody to talk to about Nigeria and it, it was around independence of that year. And I recommended Humphrey Mosu to them and they invited him to New York. When Humphrey finished addressing that gathering, it was like, could this come from Nigeria? Hmm. Oh. Could this come from, could something, so if this was possible, why are we complaining in Nigeria? Well, thank so you very I'm very much. I'm afraid that much. now yes. they are going to start giving him honors everywhere. Mm -hmm. But mm. of course. A pleasure they didn't now. give him while, he was, while he was here. Thank you very much. And that Mr. is really, Bing really unfortunate Martin. because we have lost a man Mm. who believed in Nigeria and who is a person that so many other people can learn from about serving Nigeria and being in public service. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much uh, Mr. Bean Mr. Martin, yeah. for this insight of yours. Of course, you having a first-hand experience, it's the best for us. So thank you very much. Thank you um, for your of time. Of course, you can go to YouTube to find the video, the interview. It's up on our YouTube channel on Signature TV. You can find the interview as well on our Facebook and Instagram as well. So please do make sure you check on that. Uh, we have much more interviews lined up. When we come back, we have 